Uh, today I'm going to talk about a new guided workflow from MathWorks that lets users target algorithms developed in MATLAB or Simulink to a Xilinx Zinc all programmable SOC. Algorithms can be partitioned into embedded software running on the Zinc dual core ARM Cortex A9 processing system or into hardware running on the Zinc programmable logic. This flow is tightly integrated into design platforms such as our Xilinx Zinc 7000 All Programmable SOC ZC702 Evaluation Kit to provide systems engineers and DSP embedded software developers with a way to rapidly prototype on a Zinc device without having a hardware design background. We are going to use a, a Digilent uh, programming cable to configure the Zinc programmable logic. We'll also be using a USB UART to download a Linux application that will execute on the Zinc processing system. We will also use the Ethernet cable to connect the Simulink model design uh, running on the Zinc device in external mode, and this will allow me to dynamically modify and monitor some simple design parameters like gain and control settings. So here I'm going to show you a short demo of how we take a simple design, which is an LED counter, uh, and how we, we can target the, the, the Zinc device on the ZC702 board using the MathWorks guided workflow. So the, the first thing that, uh, uh, that I'm going to want to do is, uh, is like any, any design, once you put a design together, you want to go ahead and simulate it. And again, this is a simple counter. So um, I've simulated my counter. And if I were to look at the results of this, uh, we can see it basically count up to 250 and reset. Uh, now, one of the uh, parameters on here is I can control the frequency of the counting with the slider gain. And uh, so here I've adjusted it to a different value, and then I'm going to re-simulate my design. And then if we were to look at the, uh, you know, if we were to look at the results, we can see that the results are different now. It's now counting at a much slower rate. So what we have here is a, you know, a system where we've built in some controls so we can interact with our model. And in this design, what we want to do is we want to target the LED counter to hardware, and then we'll target the top level model. We'll get targeted to software. Uh, and if I were to push down into the LED counter, uh, we can see that this is built up out of a, um, uh, an HDL counter, a lookup table, and a, and a relational operator. So it's a simple design, but all these blocks are hardware targetable with HDL coder. So let's see how the process works. Uh, I'm going to use HDL coder, uh, and I'm going to use a, um, an interface called the HDL Workflow Advisor. And I'm going to go through and generate the hardware first, uh, and then I'm going to program the FPJ, and then I'm going to go and I'm going to generate the software second. And, and then I'll program the, the, the dual core ARM uh, processing system uh, with that. Uh, so this is, uh, this is the MathWorks workflow advisor, which has just popped up. And right here are all the steps that you need to basically go through in order to, uh, in order to build up the hardware. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, set this up for IP core generation. Uh, this is platform aware, and uh, I'm now targeting the Xilinx ZC702 evaluation kit. And I'll go ahead and run this task. Uh, now, this right here, set target interface, uh, this is really where I'm matching up my algorithm to the inputs of the platform. And in this case, this is a development board. Uh, and I've got four, basically, four IOs on this design. So I've got two control signals that are used to control the frequency of the counting. And what I want to do is I want to, I want to be able to control these from the ARM subsystem through the Axiolite interface. So I'm going to specify. Uh, I'm going to specify Axiolite for the blink frequency and the blink direction. Uh, now, I, I want the IP core to, uh, to control the LEDs. So here, this is board aware. I can connect this right up to the board LEDs. And I want to be able to read back some values um, on the counting back up into this, the, uh, the, the ARM system. So here, I'm going to set this, this output signal readback uh, as an ARM. And I'm going to go ahead and, and run this task here. Uh, now, um, so I've set up my design for hardware generation. Uh, the next set of steps right here will really just check the model to make sure that, uh, that it's, um, it, it uh, doesn't have any issues with generating hardware, that it, it obeys the rules that you need to follow in Simulink for this. Uh, and then the step after that will be to, to actually generate uh, the RTO code. So there are some options you can set on how you want the code to be generated. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and jump down here, and I'm just going to run to the selected task. So it's going to run all these prerequisite tasks, uh, and it'll continue on until it gets to step 3.2. So this will just take a, a few seconds to perform this. Uh, now a, uh, a report summary has been generated, 
And if we were to scroll down to the IP generation report, this tells us a little bit about what's just happened. Um, this has generated the target interface right here, as we specified, Axiolite, Axiolite, LEDs, and Axiolite here. Um, but it generates a nice little diagram right here on what's just happened. Is uh, We've taken our counter, which is uh, uh, the algorithm for MATLAB or Simulink block, and uh, we've specified that we want some of the, the I.O. to be connected to the Axiolite. So it's automatically connected up that Axiolite interface to the IP block, and it's generated an IP core with an Axiolite interface on it. Uh, so we're, we've essentially generated everything in this orange box at this point. Uh, so the next step now is to integrate this into a, uh, a complete embedded design for Zinc and then generate a programming file for it. And that's what we'll do next. Uh, so this gets down to the, the uh, embedded system project. So here it's going to create an embedded project, generate a software model, and build a bitstream. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and run all the way down to the build bitstream generation step. And then once that completes, the final step that it can do automatically is to program uh, the programmable logic in the Zinc device using the Digilink cable. So this will, will take just a few moments to complete. So place it around is finished, and the last step is to actually program the, the, uh, the Zinc device using the Digilink cable. And uh, for this, uh, I've selected step 4.4, and I'm going to go ahead and run this task. And when the device gets programmed, if we keep our eye on these LEDs right here, we'll see that once the, it's programmed, we'll see that the LEDs start to count. And that's happening right now. So you can see that there is a, a count sequence that is taking place on the LEDs. So we know that we've programmed the programmable logic portion of the zinc. Uh, now, what we're going to do next is we're now going to program the uh, software side of this application. And um, uh, so in order to do that, uh, 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 I'll bring up the model again. And uh, what we want to do here is, uh, uh, is uh, we're going to set up this, uh, this software generation for what's called external mode. So we don't want to just deploy the software, but what would make it even more useful is if we can connect up our system model uh, uh, to the hardware in the process. And to do that, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to set up my simulation uh, configuration parameters. And under code generation uh, interface, I'm going to uh, set this up for external mode. And this is going to use the Ethernet cable to connect between the two. So I need to give it the uh, basically the Ethernet address of the uh, ZC702 board. That's 192.168.1.10 uh, is the value there. Uh, and I'm going to hit OK. Mm -hmm. And then um, what I want to do is I want to simulate for infinity. Uh, and then I also want to set up the, uh, the, <clears throat> the simulation here for external mode as well. Uh, so this is set up for external mode. And uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do what's called build model. And this is going to generate the software and the interface files for this. If we bring up the MATLAB user interface, um, we can actually watch the, the build process. We can, watch, uh, we can watch as this runs. So you can see the messages are starting to appear. Uh, it's generating code in the build folder. Uh, it's invoking the target library. Uh, and, uh, and there it's writing out the C files for the design. And again, we, uh, <clears throat> uh, this is not only going to uh, build the software, but it's going to launch a terminal window, uh, which is what it's doing right now. Uh, and, it, and it's actually started the model. So it hasn't just built the model, but it's downloaded the model to the 702 platform. And now if you look at the, the LEDs, they're blinking at a different rate. Uh, so now the software is interacting with the hardware. Uh, and then it's because it, it set up a different uh, slider gain. Now the final step on this is we actually now want to control the simulation from Simulink. So it's set up for external mode. I'm going to go ahead and, go ahead and hit um, uh, connect to target. And this is going to start the, the interface model uh, executing on the design. And we can see that it's simulating right now. 
Now, um, I can now bring up the slider bar, and if we look at the, the LEDs right now, uh, as I change the slider bar, we can see that the LEDs are changing at different rates. So here, they're, you can see here they're simulating very slowly. And then if I move the slider bar again, here they simulate at a much faster rate. So what we've actually done is we've got hardware running on the Preamble Logic, software running on the, uh, on the ARM processing system, but then we've also got a connection through Ethernet from the Simulink uh, environment back to the Zinc so that I can control the execution of my simulation from the Simulink environment. And this concludes the demo of the MathWorks. In this short demo, we have just seen how Simulink can be used to rapidly prototype a Simulink model in hardware and software running in the Zinc 7000 All Programmable SOC ZC702 Evaluation Kit. This flow completely abstracted away the hardware design steps to provide a flow that can easily be used by systems engineers and application developers who are familiar with the MathWorks. To learn more about the MathWorks guided workflow for Zinc, you can go to xilinx.com slash DSP.